saying this fox family off grid, and my dad is gonna make a charging station today. Yay! Uh, so we have a lot of electronics in the house. We have Esther's computer and my computer and Milo has a computer now and we're recharging these uh, Milwaukee tool batteries uh, for lanterns and for the drills and the, um, we have rechargeable headlamps and phones and stuff. Everybody's got stuff. So um, it was getting really messy getting all of those things charged up when we ran the generator because we want to kind of plug it all in and run that generator just for a little while. And um, so uh, I thought it might need a piece of furniture. I looked around at the stuff I had. I just came off of a project with some really nice poplar, uh, half inch thick, uh, stained kind of dark gray, and it had a lot of variation in the color and the finish turned out nice. So I'm gonna use some of that and uh, some plywood, some half-inch uh, birch plywood left over from cabinet jobs. Uh, a little bit of uh, gray paint that I had sitting around. And uh, I'm gonna scratch my head a lot to figure out exactly what this thing needs to be. So when I'm doing a custom piece like this, I just like to uh, lay out all the things that I'm trying to build around. So I measured the computers. I looked at how many other things we're gonna try and plug in at at a given time and also look at the place where it's going so taking just a, a couple of measurements of where we think it's going to sit the things that are in the way what do i need to stay out of the way of what would be too big and we'd uh, bump ourselves on it um, and then just do a little bit of drawing so i have a guide uh, as i'm building so i don't have to figure it all out as i make sawdust um, and here we are in the beautiful outdoor shop, um, which we're still rocking for another season until the uh, workshop goes up. Um, but for most things, I can get I can get most things done with my little table saw setup and the miter saw. Um, they'll do most every operation that I need. I also have a little router table in the in the table saw which allows me to use both the fence on the router table and uh, a slider as well. So I'm using both of those items for this project. I'm trying to do a lot of my cutting, the really dirty work outside, and then for assembly and finish, I move inside to the yurt. I still don't want to run a table saw inside the yurt because I had an apartment once in college that I turned into a fully functional wood shop and I did not get my deposit back. Can you imagine? <laughs> so um, it really messes up a place to do that amount of sawdust, to get it airborne, to get it everywhere. It just finds itself, finds its way into everything. So I'm still not willing to do that to the yurt. Um, I'm going to do the dirty work outside, but there will be comfy inside workshop time. Fancy. I'll see you, baby.
So I'm going to dado all of these uh, half inch ply shelves into the poplar sides. Uh, I do a little bit of work okay. to lay it out and uh, get the sides looking the way I want. And then in the interest of saving setup time and jigs and all of that, I just do real careful marking where each and every dado is going to go uh, on the insides of those poplar boards. I'm using my router table setup uh, with a miter gauge slider on it uh, to do those dados across the grain of the poplar. It's nice because it's a nice consistent depth and uh, if I'm able to hold on to it well then it'll go squarely across the, uh, the board there. The ones on the front boards I'm stopping short of the front so I don't have to look at the exit of that dado. So now I get to go inside. Uh, I don't mind doing a little hand sanding, hole drilling and whatnot inside the yurt. I still don't want to run the table saw in there. I like to pre-drill for screws uh, using the dado as a guide rather than doing some marking on the outside and uh, hoping it lines up. I can just see the center of the dado. So I'm pre-drilling for um, some cabinet screws. I like these little GRK um, cabinet screws. They're t they're kind of tiny, but I like the big truss head on them. Um, they really they grab well, and they're sort of attractive looking as well. I just have a power strip mounted at the end. I manage each each cord in its own little cubby, and then the uh, the tail comes out of a little mouse hole on the top there, so that when when the lid goes on, all you have are the are these coming out, and they just need enough cord to to reach to wherever the laptop is sitting in these. So that was my solution to one of the more frustrating parts of charging things. Uh, so far, I have another power strip mounted down here, which is gonna power the, the uh, drill battery. We also have a USB power strip that will get plugged into there for phones and headlamps and things um, on the back. This power strip from up top just plugs into the next one, and then this is how you plug in the whole item. One thing that's awesome for cord management, and I won't tell my girls that I'm stealing these, but hair ties are great because they're soft, they are stretchy, they are not tough on the cord at all, and I just put a screw in to, to hold it. I also use hair ties for like, for, uh, what did I do? For bundling up that, that tail there. So the way that I did the power supplies for the laptops, uh, the reason why I did that with mouse holes and right on top is because this way you can easily get your power supply out and take it with you if you're going. Uh, I take my laptop uh, uh, 
onto job sites with me a lot. So uh, this way there's no threading through a hole or some other silliness. We have made great strides towards decluttering today. And what's the charging station for? Uh, charging things? <laughs> okay, goodbye.